And welcome Desk of Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome Desk of Lady Ada. It's me, Lady Ada, at my desk with me, Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. Hello. Behind the scenes, hello, Mr. Lady Ada. It's a uh, wonderful, warm uh, August Sunday night, and we're ready to do the desk. Like 20, 30 minutes of some uh, things I've been working on, some things I want to talk about. It's my yeah. time. And uh, we'll also do the great search at the end. All right. So uh, to kick it off, I just wanted to say, you know, we went outside. It was outside. And uh, we went hot. to go see Inertia in Washington Square Park. And Inertia is a really neat, uh, like, pop-up STEM thing. We met Karina. And they have this cool mirror in Washington Square Park. It's there all day. Uh, it was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today, and I think Monday and Tuesday. It has this mirror for young people to walk up in front of and it has this thing and it says this is what an engineer looks like and so it's a really powerful way i think to get young people to see and a lot of people taking their photo in front of yeah it. and it was just like you know it was beautiful outside and like here's karina there's alexa the photographer and it was just really neat to see so many people um going up in front of the mirror and they were imagining themselves uh, with the word engineer and themselves and i think this was a, a very subtle but powerful way to get people to think about so check it out if you're in new york city like you can go visit it washington square park it's yeah. there from like 10 a.m to 7 p.m yeah that was cool for the next week or so so we went there anyways um so uh next up um a lot of folks sent this in and i guess i could start just jump right into this right Don't jump right in. okay so um this is one of the boards that we have and uh well we watched suicide squad and Lady Ada saw a frame go by, and she's like, that's my board. And when we looked really close, and I, and I had to like take a photo of it on my iPad, because yeah, there's no way to screenshot. You can't, you can't you screenshot. Can't screenshot you know, we're watching I know. It so anyways, so she spotted it, and we, like, we, we paused it, we got it. And then um, a lot of people started sending us this. This is King Shark holding it, and, he's, and he said, Peacemaker. But then uh, the, the, I guess the marketing side, they published this little video on, on Twitter, and I'm going to play just like a couple seconds of it, but it shows our board, so I'm going to play it. Peacemaker! Yeah. So, so that's it there. Isn't that cool? Memed. And so you were saying, I could spot my boards anywhere because they look a certain way, and I'm just and like... like two, fr two frames. Yeah. It was very fast. I mean, like, it, you know, hindsight wasn't that fast, but, you know... Oh. I should also mention that, yes, we're going to try to make a 3D printed star and use a Halloween. Anyways, back to this. Um, so, Gigantic. Yeah. So. Starfish. So you were you were talking about this would be a good thing to talk about on desk of Lady Ada. Yeah, I thought it was interesting because it's like you know we were wondering you know what uh, we were making the joke it's so easy to spot our boards because our boards look a certain way and um, I realized that they they have a certain look to them. Um, yeah, like this went by fast. It was it was it, it's a split second frame. Yeah. And, uh, and literally no, split fine. second. And I thought I could show uh, maybe on the overhead maybe I could I could. Yeah. Show some of this like classic Adafruit design and, and what what it, to look for, what I look for. So, um, you know, for uh, many many years, oh. when uh, hold on, I have to remember how to use there. this thing. Why can't I? There it goes. Lock. Okay. There it went. Um, for for many many years, you know, I was making uh, boards with green. Um, PCB mask like this this prototype here is green green is the most uh, you know generic most common PCB color um, because it's the opposite of orange which is copper and so you get really good contrast and so you can see the traces really well um, and I think also the the green LPI they've just I don't know they figured out how to get really good uh, quality out of it I know when I did fabric silk screens there were also blue or green there could be just some something about that color that um, when you use a UV process to um, photo etch it, uh, it looks really good. Um, so we used green for a really long time because that was the most inexpensive, but there's actually a couple standard colors for PCBs. I don't have, you know, one of each color here, but I can show, you know, here's an example of a, of a red PCB. This is just like a little LCD module and there's green, there's blue, and then there's, uh, black. And then there's also white, although I'm almost positive. I don't, oh, wait, I have one white PCB. Um, uh, there's also sometimes you can get pink or purple, uh, and sometimes you can get yellow. And those are the standard colors. Like, not every color is available. There's white, black, red, green, blue, and then again, you know, sometimes yellow. 
and uh, and sometimes uh, purple, like Oshpark does purple. Um, and when we were starting out, um, SparkFun was red. They had all their PCBs were red, and I, I wanted to have our boards stand out and look different. Um, and so I was like, I didn't really want to make them red, although sometimes they use red. I mean, like there's only five colors, so you're you can't not use a color. Nobody owns the color. Um, but I wanted to try something different uh, to make our boards stand out, and so I could sort of differentiate if I saw a pile of boards if any of them were ours. And I kind of liked blue, you know, black I liked, but blue I, I, I kind of preferred for a really long time. Um, also, my PCB house had blue as an option that wasn't, they didn't charge more for it. And so um, I like blue with, you know, gold Enig um, coat. Uh, you know, the, the Enig coat's a little bit more expensive, but um, if you're doing... Uh, pick and placing, I find that the vision system and the paste works better with Enig uh, gold coat. And then um, one of our developers, K-Town, kind of came up with his his style, uh, which he brought, which was to have these gold mounting holes, you know, these uh, two 2.5 or 3 uh, M3 metric um, holes in the corners uh, for mounting a PCB. And so, you know, we don't always have um, gold plate on the PCBs, although, you know, here you can see uh, these are plated, these are not. You can see that uh, these these have four plated holes. I like the look of the plated holes. Um, they also, they're also visually very striking, and so people know, like, okay, that's where I'm going to attach to. Um, and the gold also gives it a little bit of strength. I think it looks better than just like a, a raw hole. Also, it tells you where the screw head is going to, you know, if you have a pan head screw, um, it covers the gold. And so like you kind of have an idea where PCB parts have to be away from so that you can use a, a pan head screw. So here's a question. It's not about our boards, but it may be a general tip. Um, does anyone have a good idea on how to work with an old PCB where the pads keep falling off? Uh, this person lost two boards already. Not Adafruit boards, but yeah, boards. those. I know if it's if they're not meant for rework, especially the um, the paper phenolic single sided boards. There, you just have to be. You just have to have a really good temperature iron and just work fast. Um, yeah. And just yeah, we do a lot of repair. A lot of people repair the boards. Uh, and then recently, um, we started doing uh, black PCBs a lot for our designs. So you know, here's a a, a cutie pie with a black and white PCB. Um, I don't know exactly why we moved to black and white. I think, you know, the original um, well, place that we got the ideas for the black and white PCBs was Liquidware. They, they were definitely out of business. And so we yeah. were like, well, you know, this is a kind of a cool look. I think I, my PCB house did not do black, so I had to find a different one. I, I, mean, I can, won't remember exactly. Yeah. It was harder for us to do black. And once we were able to, we did. Also, if there was someone else that was making similar things... We're like, well, let's try not to do that. And so as soon as that was all true, we started doing it. Yep. So that's that's kind of the look. And so, you know, when this this PCB um, was in this movie frame, it was really easy to yeah. uh, detect it because it had the blue with the gold and those plated holes in the corner. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the white, uh, white silk screen on top. I, I still do like the blue. I still do blue PCBs once in a while. But really, it's it's those gold. It's like what what was it that really made me be like, okay, this is this is the thing. It's those gold plate holes. Those are those are kind of an Adafruitism. I don't see, I, I don't understand why other companies don't do it. But I think um, it's always nice to have four plated mounting holes. It, they don't take up too much space, but they show that it's not uh, overly crowded. I've seen overly crowded PCBs with no mounting holes, and and people are like, oh, I like the PCBs when they're small. But I think it you you don't gain a lot from having it that much smaller. Okay, let's uh, now go to the great search. Yeah, okay. What do you want to do? Uh, want me to just pop right in? Well, is there any other questions about PCB styling? No, you're good. Oh, I, people like the purple Metro M4. Yeah, fine. I did. I'll tell you, I have done purple, but getting purple is a real is a real pain. It's easy when it's through Oshpark because it can have a special deal, but getting getting production PCs, I've gotten slightly different colors each time. It's not as consistent as the black or the blue or the red. Like those are very standard colors. They, you know, I think they're, they come with that color. Anything, you can get Pantone matched, but it never, mm. it never quite looks as good. I would love to have X-ray style, the Oshpark X-ray, but I've had trouble getting a PCB house to do that for me too. So no. we tend to do black and white. All right, so uh, do you want to bounce right into uh, yeah. the Great Search? Yeah, let's go All to the right. Great Search. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search. All right, 
Write the Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey, for making this segment possible. Lady uses her powers of engineering and her decades almost now of using the DigiKey site to find parts you need. Kind of important now because it's hard to find some parts. Yes. So theoretically, if someone was looking for a part, maybe this week we're going to help them figure that out. Yeah, I take inspiration because I think the people, you know, what people are publicly talking about is what people are privately struggling with. And um, yeah. we had that quote from last week for the article where I think, you know, we were we were quoting about um, how hard it is to, to get parts and it's a struggle and like things get delayed. And also we mentioned the great search was a, uh, a good place to go. If you people yeah. have questions, go to Discord. Tell us what part you're looking for, and we will help you. So this week, um, let's go to the computer. So I we got this notice for a crowd. You're you're a, a crowdfund uh, backer of this project. Yeah. This is the Glasgow Interface Explorer, and I thought this was interesting because they were having problems having a part. And I thought, like, I'm not saying I'm going to find that part. I'm just saying here's how I would go about trying to find an alternative. How would, how would I solve it? And I'm sure they have very good reasons for the reason they're, they're, they're doing what they're doing. So this is not to say I, I know better than them. I'm just, uh, I'm just taking inspiration. Yeah. So anytime uh, we see anyone talking about parts, we're like, oh, how will we get that? How will I, yeah. We, I'm just using it as, as, as a, a basis, as a, as yeah. a springboard. Um, so the last missing part that they have is a TPS th- 73101 DBVT LDO voltage regulator for uh, GPO bank control. They ordered it, they can get it, and then like people are like scalping it. Um, and they're like, we're looking for parts, but the TPS 73101 is a pretty unique part. Besides reverse polarity protection, it also has fold back current limit. Uh, and that's one of the things that they like. So they like that there's this, feed, there's this back current uh, limiting capability. Um, so I thought that was interesting because I would never really specced a board with that part. And I, I do want to mention, um, so if you go to, you know, the TPS 78101, uh, sorry, 73101, which of course is not in stock here because if it wasn't stock, they'd buy it. Um, so this part, the fold back current isn't something that's that's listed in the specifications. They have, you know, overcurrent, over temperature, and short circuit, and reverse polarity. But those are like additional product features. Those aren't things that you can select for. Um, the DigiKey search is really, really strong when you're talking about um, quantitative qualities of your uh of your chip. So, you know, you're like, what's the input voltage max? What's the current output max? What's the inductance? What's the the Q? What's the ESR? All of these things, you know, for your components, that's where the DigiKey search is really, really great. But when you're talking about like qualitative things, where it's like, does it have this feature? That's where it's gonna get a lot tougher because, you know, it, it it's it's not something you just look up in a data sheet. Um, Fold back current, like I said, it's not, it's not in there. Like you might say, well, that's short circuit protection or overcurrent protection, but it sounds like it's a very specific capability that they're looking for in this regulator. And so um, that's why for this, if I was going to find an alternative for this part, well, first off, you know, this part is a, a SOT 23.5 LDO. Having dealt with SOT 23 LDOs, you know, this is a very standard package in size. So anything that we've regulated that we find, with this package overall, the pinout's going to be the same because, like, every SOT 235 regulator I've ever seen, I mean, like, of course, check the data sheet, but it's, it's, I've never seen one that doesn't have the exact same pinout from one to the other. It's a very standardized pinout, thankfully. Not always true. You know, transistors don't even, they only have three pins and they don't have a standard pinout, um, but uh, this chip does. So, yeah, so this part is, you know, not available, and they're like, we're not going to have any till uh, 2022. Maybe you don't want to wait till 2022. Um, so this is actually where I would go to DigiKey, uh, sorry, to TI, not to DigiKey, and look at what TI recommends. Because one thing that I know from working with TI parts is they often ha- they often section out their regulators into um, capability slots. So, for example... Um, Let's go to like, uh, we have like the TPS, uh, 
TPS 61023. So the 61023 regular, uh, this is like a boost converter. Um, from what I remember, this is part of a family and it was like the 61023 and 61021 and et cetera, et cetera. There was like a family of them. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Let's see, I think it's if I search for the TK61. Yeah, so there's there's always going to be like within that part number, there's usually like a family of parts. So they'll start with the first few numbers, but then like one will be like a two amp regulator and one will be a four amp and one will be a three amp. So you'll be able to get like different um, levels of output based on like the part number, but it won't be like a sub part number. It'll actually be a totally new part number. So what I mean is like if you're, if you know, you're specking, a, uh, when TI makes this boost converter, right? They, they make a boost converter and some are just gonna make it through the process and be able to like handle four amps, some are gonna handle three amps, some are gonna handle, handle two, and then they'll bin those and they'll separate them or you know however they decide the process so you can get a, a two amp version, a three amp version, a four amp version. So this is actually also um, in the, the power boost so the PowerBoost 500 and the 1000 actually use, um, if you look closely uh, to here, these actually use almost the same exact layout, the 500 and the 1000, but the, and the chip is the same package as well. But this is the um, TPS 61090, hold on. This is a TPS 61090 with a two amp switch. And the Power Boost 1000 is the TPS, uh, sorry, hold on. This is the TPS 6130. So the TPS 6130 is the one that has four amp internal si switch. The TPS 6190 has the, uh, the two amp switch. So the smaller number has the more current that's that's how it goes sometimes. It doesn't mean anything. Um, okay, so the, the upshot is is that if you're trying to find a regulator, a boost converter, or something from TI, and you can't find your exact part, you might be able to go up and down in either accuracy or current output or like voltage input limit and find something that has almost the exact same capabilities but like a slightly different um, specification. So uh, if we go to, uh, let's see, was the... TPS uh, 73101, the DBVT is a, you know, a sub part, uh, sub, yes, a sub part number that usually specifies the temperature, the packaging, and the, um, uh, the reeling, like how big the reel is, so we can ignore that. So this is, yeah, so this is part of a family, there's the 73101, which is, you know, the specific component, and then um, this one has adjustable output and there's also the family TPS 731 and this is you can see this is like doesn't have the full part number that's because it's a it's a family of regulators including um, ones with fixed voltage output so the 101 is the adjustable but then there's like the uh, 73118 which is 1.8 731 uh, five zero, which is a five point zero volt. So, like, there's a wide range of them, um, but you're gonna have the same functionality. Like that fold back over current protection that they wanted is going to be in in every part of that family. Um, so, I thought what was interesting is that if you look, they have you know a range of very similar boards with similar performance um, and probably the same kind of functionality. So, let's look at. Um, let's look at find other, do I want to find other regulars? Yeah, let's, let's do find other regulars. Let's see if they have the fold back protection as one of the, uh, the output capability. So this is 7313, V in min, uh, let's not have an, a maximum output. So this is, I'm searching for the 73101 and then I'm just kind of 
deleting things that aren't as important to me. Um, so no V, the V and Max can be, I guess this is fine, this is fine. We can say maybe the noise is not as important. Um, I don't care about fixed output because I want adjustable output. Let's remove the V and Min so it can be a wider range. And V and Max has to be at least 5 volts. V out Max, yeah, 5 volts, that's fine. And then the minimum as well. Okay. So um, it has about 13 different parts, and you can see that this is that 73101. Uh, it's still here. Um, oh, wait, we wanted to find the uh, fold back. Let's see if this is in here. Actually, I don't remember if this is in here. Okay, here you go. Fold back over current protection. Okay, so here's the ones that have that fold back protection and have at least, uh, you know, maybe the same amount of current. So there's the 731 and there is the 732. And if you look and compare between the two, the 731, 732, both have the same list of functionality. This one's a little bit more expensive. Um, this one looks like it has the same number of fixed outputs as adjustable outputs. And this one is 250 milliamp output instead of 150. So that makes sense. The 731 is 150. 732 is 250. So um, if we look at the 732, now again, you know, if I had more time, I'd go through the entire data sheet and I'd compare it one by one uh, to see if the quiescent current is what I need, if the dropout is what I need. But it could be that, like, you could just use this instead of the 731, just use the 732, like the next step up. Um, so if you go to DigiKey, I think TPS 73. 73201, because the 01 is the adjustable version. And um, let's also only show in stock, because we only care about if they have in stock. That's what we're looking for. So it looks like there's two versions. So for, I don't know what DCQ is. I don't know if this is, this looks like it's a, uh, a different package. Although, that's weird, because I didn't know this came in another package. But they do have the SOT uh, 235 in it. It's available through, you know, Marketplace. It's through a third party. Um, Rochester Electronics, which sells, you know, uh, it's, it's gray market. It's not the official distributor, but they do sell, um, you know, distribution quality parts. Looks like they've got 3,000 available. Um, only thing is, is the price is kind of high. You know, it, it's going to be $2 instead of what you would normally budget for it, which I believe in the search set a budget of about 50 cents. So, I mean, the question is, you know, is the extra dollar fifty price worth it to get this uh, board out there on the road? Um, another option that I would do is if you don't want to go with the TPS 73201, there's also the 73401, which is the next step up in linear regulators. Um, and this one, let's also only show in stock. And this one, oh, this one, yeah, you can get these a little bit cheaper. Um, they go down to like a dollar or 73 cents, but they don't have a lot in stock. And they're not getting them talked over, so never mind. Um, I thought these that they actually had some of these in stock. But if you can find through another distributor, um, you could also change to the WSON version package. I guess they come, come in both SOC 23 and WSON. But I think the best bet right now, you know, it's, it's annoying to pay more for, uh, whoops, one second. It's annoying to pay more for a regulator when, you know, normally you'd spec at 50 cents and you're, you know, you're pay $2. On the other hand, it's two dollars, not five dollars, and if you really want to get it out the door, this might be more important. And uh, maybe next time we'll also look at maybe how to find other regulators with foldback um, current protection, because again, it's it's a unique thing that you're going to have to know how to find. Um, but this is a good alternative, you know, if you really want to get your board out and you don't mind spending a little bit more. Uh, I think this would probably be a drop-in alternative, and of course, you know, it has more current capability, so you can even 
connect more stuff to the output of your board. All right, that's a great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. All right. Oh, I forgot to do my disclosure for all this stuff. So we, we don't get paid to write about Warner Brothers movies. We're not part of the Suicide Squad yet. No, um, they want to. We, keep, <laughs> we keep applying, but they don't. Yeah. They don't um, we saw the movie uh, on our iPad, and uh, we saw this, and we write about stuff. Man, our stuff was in The Mandalorian and a whole bunch of others, and it's always this really cool. This is not cool. the first. Yeah, our stuff comes in movies. It's always really it cool to see your stuff in movies, and we're always going to write about it, and we don't do any marketing for movie studios or whatever. So please do not have bad faith arguments about that. It's not true. Yeah. <laughs> That's my disclosure. It's mostly just Twitter. People are kind of nuts. Um, okay. That's, All right, that's it. We talked about some board designs. It. We talked about some alternative parts, and we showed some mirrors. All right. We'll Thanks, see everybody. everybody during the week.